coming coming to the topic of uh, of this talk. So what I'll do right now, I will uh, use equivariant uh, theory to so the plan of the talk. Sorry. First, I'll say that uh, I will use equivariant techniques <laughs> sum over instantonic number for TPN model. Point two. I'll analyze the freckle phenomenon. Namely, I'll comment in detail these four equals three plus one formula. Mm -hmm. You will see how four comes out, how three comes out, and how one comes out. Okay? Explaining that uh, gauge linear is not equal to nonlinear. So, which is written uh, in my papers. However, my uh, current point of view is that there is no need to say that there is something wrong engaged linear sigma model. It's just another theory. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's another theory with the special properties that uh, can and should be studied. And uh, which theory do you have depends on, on the definition you are giving. However, if you have gauged linear model and you expect the properties of nonlinear sigma model, uh, you may be confused, as people were confused 25 years ago. 20, not 25. Ah, really around 25 years ago. Quarter of a century ago. Once again, my point is that uh, this difference is not about uh, writing down this formula, that formula, saying that this formula is correct, that formula is not correct. These two formulas just describe different theories, different setups. Mm -hmm. So if you have different definitions, you may get something different. You may get something, uh, sometimes things are different, sometimes, sometimes they are the same. It doesn't mean that there is something wrong in formulas. Different setups. So, and they may be a, a very silly question, but is there, so we know that there is a one dimensional an analog of a non linear Sigma model or the A model. Is there a one dimensional analog of GLSM? Of course. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you, you you can easily write uh, it, it's even simpler. Mm -hmm. Moreover, when I was coming to Saint Petersburg twenty years ago, I was mm -hmm. trying to teach mm -hmm. about, and this is. Uh, Dimension of, of course, this is the this is reduction to Chern Simon. Uh, sorry, it's reduction mm -hmm. of Chern Simon to dimension one. Mm -hmm. It's our uh, famous model. One dimensional envelope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a, and, and, and here you can make gauge fixing. You can make different gauge fixing. 
-hmm. And uh, here it's a real polarization. I prefer write down complex polarization. Because I prefer to write it like this. And then you have to integrate over A. But of course, when you have to integrate over A, uh, and you have a gauge fixing. And mm -hmm. uh, moreover, there is an interesting observable that you can have here. So, uh, So this model could be easily quantized. One of the way to quantize this model is to quantize this model. Mm -hmm. So, so you, and of course you'll get CPL. Actually, you'll get line bundle of the level K over CPM. So when you, when you quantize this model, you will get uh, something like Psi functions are functions of Z. Mm -hmm. Polynomials in N plus one variable. But here you need to gauge it. Yes, I I I remember. Then then you have this. Wilson line observable. Mm -hmm. So let uh, A be a billion. Mm -hmm. So then you have you have this. You have carbon. And uh, what I can read out of this is that current here I, here I need to put sum over a minus k so that, so that's what you have in the integral mm -hmm. so it's a quantum moment map not classical moment map but quantum moment map It's a condition that you impose when you integrate over A. You can easily see that this is the Euler operator. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you impose the quantum condition Euler operator minus K on Psi of Z equals to zero. Mm -hmm. So you have just degree K polynomial. So it's a theory. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, if you, what you can compute in such theory, you can compute partition function. Mm -hmm. So when you try to compute partition function, you need to find in quantum theory, it's clear what you are doing. You are looking for the number of degree K polynomials. Mm -hmm. However, you may do it using functional integral. You may gauge this A down to the constant mode. Okay? On a circle. So on, on a circle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me call it A mode. Or oh, I have A. A C means constant mode. Okay? Then we compute this functional integral. And uh, here you also have AC. What else do you have? You can compute this uh, integral. 
Pasha, I think you remember that it looks like something like this. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I don't care about 2 pi. And uh, it goes to the degree n plus 1. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, here, w w what you have here should be a monodromy. So that should be something like I. And does K participate in the answer? <laughs> it, <laughs> right. The number of degree K polynomials depend on K. Yes, yes, right. Yes, of course. So here you have E to the K. And here is a nice integral formula for the number uh, of uh, degree k polynomials. Mm -hmm. What you have downstairs is nothing but generating functions for all polynomials. Mm -hmm. So some of you have, have here i, maybe here we have minus i. For this integral to be non-zero, this should uh, exponentials from the denominator and the numerator should cancel mm -hmm. form one. And yes. that's why you get exactly this number. Mm -hmm. So this is the way how to use functional mm -hmm. integral in one dimensional theory to get an integral representation for the, for the, for the number of degree k polynomials of mm -hmm. n plus one variables. So that's how we compute h naught of O1 on, on O, O k, so. Here is the integral representation. And what is interesting is that in this integral representation, we have this factor. Mm -hmm. From one hand side, we got it uh, from determinant, but it's also generating function. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have non-abelian group, you may compute similar things uh, oh, for the Spanish. Yeah. Yes. The mm -hmm. tricky thing is that in the case of Grismanians, you have some interesting factors coming from ghosts. Mm. So actually, so I, I have not completed it. I discussed it with Putrov, whom you definitely know, as yes. a toy student problem. Mm -hmm. And it's possible to write down these uh, formulas and, uh, and you know, it, it, it's a prominent formula, a number of states. So expanding, yeah. in, expanding in one over K gives you quasi a classical expansion, as you know, mm -hmm. because you can, you can put it all the way around. And uh, instead, you can express A in terms of Z, plug it here, and get something complicated. Because you know that, do you know what A would you have here? Free symplectic form on CPN. It's mm -hmm. interesting that yeah. if you first integrate out A, mm -hmm. you will find A critical in terms of Z. Plug it here and have nonlinear formula. Mm -hmm. So do you know why I'm jumping here? I'm jumping here because uh, it is the example when you can see simultaneously exact quantum systems 
mm-hmm. the classical limits where we where you have functional integrals when you have mm-hmm. when you can do them first in z then in the a or first in a then in z mm-hmm. okay and mm-hmm. you understand that if you first integrate out a it's also possible so look you may integrate out a first and then take a quotient that's possible Mm -hmm. then okay let me call it z bar z dot minus a z z bar Mm -hmm. plus k a so here we have z z bar square plus k times a, and here we have z bar z dot. So no, no square, just z bar. Yeah, sorry. Right. Mm-hmm. So somehow you you find that a is z. You find that a is z, z, z dot over, over this. And you plug it here. So you will get a sigma model. Mm-hmm. And then you and then you will need to integrate out uh, uh, to, to take quotient with respect to u1. Mm-hmm. And then you assume that you can do it. You will have a uh, theory on the CP, CPM. So look, you do this integral, mm-hmm. you go to zero momentum. So you are on the sphere already. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you put on the sphere, you have a new sigma module, something very complicated. K that enters linearly here enters there in the form of so that's what you will get mm-hmm. something highly nonlinear interacting okay And then you can say, oh, how to do this? Maybe you will say, I need to do one over k expansion. Maybe I need to do geometric quantization. Maybe this, maybe that. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, this theory is nothing but effective theory for this simple theory. And then the simple theory, it's much easier to integrate z out first. Mm -hmm. And only then integrate over a. So, Pasha, mm-hmm. I am very grateful for your. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I should include it in my plan of the talk. No, it's it's a, it's a very interesting theory. Yes, it's it's a very interesting, simple, doable model. Yes. Yeah. Well, where we have all answers, and when you mm-hmm. cannot cheat yourself. Yes. And it says that it's much that, it, that if you want to get an answer, you should not study this complicated nonlinear thing. You have phi, phi dot together, very mm-hmm. hard to quantize. This is yes. nonlinear. This is gauged linear. Mm-hmm. So for many reasons, gauged linear is much better than nonlinear. So what is alpha there in this one form? Where? No. no. Higher, yes. So it's alpha is such form that the new Some alpha point. u would be for Binish two. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think that exact way, exact form of of alpha maybe would depend on something. Uh, maybe it would depend on gauge fixing, because mm-hmm. you need to uh, gauge fix u one. You have a fix here. You actually have a Higgs phenomena here. 
So you see, it's, it's kind of an interesting model. And it has a moral that it's better to first integrate this linear thing out and then deal with the gauge degrees of freedom. Well, you dropped in the Higgs phenomenon. What, where is here? What, what? You mentioned that Higgs phenomenon is here. Where? Because uh, it, it's a gauge theory. Yes, but where, where we need some non-zero vacuum expectation of something? Yes, moduli z square. Okay, yes. Is non-zero. Okay. At least classically, you say that you have a Higgs phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you don't have these peculiarities uh, where we have uh, Higgs and non-Higgs phase. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's that's a very interesting thing. So, sorry for derailing you. I'm, I'm trying, uh, you see, I'm trying to present you the most interesting things from what I know. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to make mm -hmm. it as simple as I can. Mm -hmm. But here you mm -hmm. can uh, work it out, write down formulas, especially yeah. for, uh, for Grassmannian. For Grassmannian, it would be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's like uh, gauge theory is a matter. Yes. yes. My okay. thing is that we have gauge mm -hmm. theory and matter in mathematics. Yes. And uh, I need to criticize Arnold. Okay. So I criticize Arnold because Arnold spent some time explaining what is symplectic reduction. But Arnold never understood quantum mechanics. Never. Mm -hmm. So would there be someone who could uh, explain it to him? He would be happy because these tricks is something that he really likes. Liked, I'm sorry. So, um, but th th there is, so in, in these two dimensional studies that we discussed, there was always some, I, I know, some, some, I don't know, homological algebra going on or, or supersymmetry. And here there's nothing. It's a purely bosonic theory. No fermions, no nothing. Yes, you, you, you get, uh, you get number of sections, yes. Mm -hmm. you, so you may look uh, how one thing is related to another thing. Mm -hmm. So every time you add dimension, you potentially add something. Mm -hmm. Because the circle is not a line. If you replace point by a line, you can contract line to the, back to the point. However, if you replace circle, you start having new phenomena. What can I say? Yes. Oh, well, I guess homological algebra is secretly there because we just didn't write down ghosts for uh, for the denominator for U one. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. if, if if you want this homological algebra, then yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they just decouple for the abelian model. I see. But it's interesting that the non-abelian model they do not decouple. So mm -hmm. in such formulas for uh, Grossmanians, you will have interesting God contributions. And mm -hmm. uh, also, as you know, these things, uh, these formulas for dimensions are, are kind of important because they are periods of Fubini Studi, as you know. Because these thing, thing, things could be, as you know, Mm -hmm. This is something like uh, Chern times Todd. Oh, oh, yeah. And A genus, as you integrate. So, knowing this, and here is K, and here is no K. So, you have uh, some knowledge of periods. So, you're saying that we can also compute it by Riemann Roch or something like that? Yeah. So, so, it is. 
So it is the, the modern way how to take uh, integrals of differential forms. In mm -hmm. old days, people used uh, different tricks. Nowadays, people are computing integrals in the following way. They are studying dimension of the space of states. They study its asymptotics. And that's how they compute uh, integrals of differential forms. Okay? Nice, nice. So just, it's a, it's a trick. Imagine you have a set of differential forms. Make this differential form to be a curvature, if it's two form, to be a curvature of, the, of some line bundle. Okay? Mm -hmm. Study problem mm -hmm. in, in such gauge field, integrate. Find the dimension of states, take asymptotics, and you'll get. Uh, so actually, people people are integrating this. So e to the k f could be integrated, not f itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I give a bit of spirit. Uh, of uh, what people of what should be called uh, quantum geometry. So quantum geometry is not about points and lines and even cycles. Quantum geometry is about numbers, spaces of states, and the nice combinatorics going there. And then mm -hmm. people say, now in the limit we see, okay? It is more than it is how quantum uh, mechanics uh, enters the geometry. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Arnold, so somebody had to explain it to Arnold because Arnold would like it. Because he liked uh, synthetic things. He liked physics coming inside mathematics. He would criticize all formal manifolds, schemes, uh, stacks, you know. That's what he didn't like. But to compute the number of polynomials using mm -hmm. uh, physics, he would admire this. But nobody mm -hmm. was able to explain it to him. All right. No, no that, that's, that's a great model. Yes, I, I advocate this model. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have uh, students here. So would there be any student? I would recommend students to write down these formulas that are, by the way, well known. And do you know why they are well known? It's because uh, Nikita Nikrasov already wrote this. <laughs> this in more complicated context. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Nikita Nikrasov with uh, Shotashvili in ADHM, okay. In ADHM context, studied the quotient by the non-abelian group. Mm -hmm. And there you need to write ghosts. There are ghosts. I was, mm -hmm. I am not explaining to you. I I'll tell you, honestly. Mm -hmm. In the next talks, I'll tell you about the quotients of a non-abelian group. But, mm -hmm. but at the moment, I want to finish with the quotients of a abelian group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I cannot explain everything at the same time. Still, yes. still quotients over a billion group. Mm -hmm. It is good that we recalled observables. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me tell mm -hmm. you why it is good that we recall the observable. Mm -hmm. I'm writing this space EP n plus one, E plus one, minus one. Space of quasi maps or space of, uh, I cannot call them instantons. Okay, uh, instantons. Everything is instanton now. Instantons in the gauged linear model. Mm -hmm. And there is also space. EP1, 
prime CP1. Data. So what can we write down? We can write down here a map to see n plus one times times c n plus one. So, uh, and the, the picture is blurry. Blurry. Blurry, yeah. Mutne. Ah, no focus. Yes, no focus. Okay, I know how to fight with no focus. Mm -hmm. Oh, right now there is focus. <laughs> now mm -hmm. there is focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is this? We uh, there is a formula. That is, we take A, I, A. So maybe, maybe, maybe I put it this way. D naught to the power K. One to the power D minus K. Sum over K. Okay. I would say and this map is E star to the power k variance. Sorry, I, I have to call this L. It's too many letters. So this, so what I wrote here is a degree D was map. Given Z naught and Z one, I get I get Y. We understand this as a section of the line bundle. Okay, mm -hmm. here it's just an element of C. Okay. Now, if I rescale Z naught and Z one simultaneously, all these Y's would rescale. Mm -hmm. So it will be the same point on, uh, so it is, uh, so, it, so, so this is C star equivariant map. Now I can try to write down what I called almost evaluation map. So what, what do I mean by almost evaluation map? I am I am going here, but I have no warranty that I will not go to zero here. I could go to zero. So that's why it's almost evaluation map. So almost evaluation map, it's like almost necklace sneak from uh, Gary Potter. Yes. But it's a matter of fact. Ne nearly oh. headless was his name, ah, nearly yes. headless. Okay. okay, so it's not almost. Yes, he was not almost, he was nearly. Nearly headless, yes, yes nearly headless. Yes. So nearly evaluation map. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the same sense, yes. 
merely relational map. So what does it mean? So why did I need evaluation map before? I need evaluation map to full back differential form. Okay? So now I actually do not want to, to study differential forms on CPM. Mm -hmm. Basically because in general I do not know how to how to put them to zero. Mm -hmm. They may not uh, go to zero. It's another orbit. Yes. Like angle would not go to zero. But there are some observables. Some differential forms on CPM could go to zero. Okay. Some of them. Like what is given by YA equal to zero. So this differential form nicely nicely go go through the nearly evaluation map. I can consider oh okay so if, if it's nearly okay thank you so, so, sorry I didn't understand uh, what you said about the formula the the forms that extend to zero so which which one do, do you offer oh, do you suggest this form delta on y equal to zero extend this delta form extends to zero. Let me draw it. Mm -hmm. uh, let me try to draw a geometrical picture. There are some forms, like I don't know. Just it's just a picture. I'm trying to show you my imagination. There is such a form, and it's absolutely not clear what this form. Okay. Two parallel. There is such a form. It's delta function on this ray. Mm -hmm. It is not closed here, and mm -hmm. it's not quite clear how to extend it to zero. So this form, so this delta function, uh, I would say, is a bad form. It's a good form on the circle, but bad form on the plane. However, delta function here is a good form. It's a delta function on something on the plane. Not on the plane with a point cut out. Mm -hmm. And also it is invariant. So here, uh, here is R instead of C star, but I, I hope you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these, uh, these are allowed. It. Since we are mapping to C n plus one. Mm -hmm. So, so these are the delta function on on invariant uh, submanifolds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for these, we can write down uh, the equation. So it is clear how to write down 
delta function here. Mm -hmm. Now, please note that we have quite nonlinear expression here. Mm -hmm. But we are not afraid because the, because this is expression for y. So this is expression for a function. We are not going to solve it. Mm -hmm. We would like to study the following thing. Delta function, so we call it delta on the line. It's a differential form here. And this delta on the line depends on z not z1. So actually this thing depends not on this thing depends on the line in CP1. But it is fine and nice differential form. It's, it's polynomial. So the thing that we need to know is... Uh, what is the class of the pullback of such differential form? And we already studied this issue when we studied CPM model. Recall. The delta function on the line was called hyperplane. It was represented by sigma. Okay? The intersection of these two. Okay, this product is delta function on intersection. is equivalent to sigma squared, etc. Okay? Now, this, this is a, this is a dependence. So now we know, now we know what? We know that for a given z, we get we have we we, we have here exactly the same uh, linear function. So is equivalent to sigma. I, maybe I need to call this sigma by uh, other letter. No, the same sigma. Sigma from the for the U1 action here. Okay? For given Z. Now, consider, for example, one CP1. Take one CP1. And uh, while here we have sigma, here we have, how should we call it? Another letter like sigma. Five. Homology 
them of this file. Cohomology of this CPN are, of course, functions of phi. Okay? We want to understand the following thing. We take evaluation of this observable and look at it at, dif at differential forms here. So its component here is sigma. Now, what is this? Com what is its component on this CP one? What we see, we see that it is uh, something of degree d. Okay. So degree d. Degree d means that it is just. D phi. Would it be degree one? There would be no difference. Can, 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 uh, the situation would be symmetric. For degree D, oh, sorry, yes. So it's not a differential. I'll put it like this D times phi. D phi. So altogether, the class of this observable is d phi plus sigma. So, is it clear right here I have to Multiply it by d. So it's clear. So it's one equation. So it's delta function on the quadric. Or on the, on the something of degree d. The easiest way to show that it is d times the rest is to consider the degenerate the uh, generate equation. So the class along this CP1 should not depend on A capital. So we can take such A capital that it is Z0, say minus Z1 to the power D. So this is definitely D copies of something for Z0 minus Z1. So that's why the class is D. So So now we are ready. Now we are ready to do the following. We have observables O K that correspond to to what to the intersection of k lines and their class is d phi plus sigma to the power k Or I can just say I have polynomial of d times phi plus sigma. Then I don't even need to put it here. Now, it has a class on such space. But we are going to integrate over this space. So we have to integrate 
over uh, some cycle here. The simplest way would be to integrate over a point. So OK0. Integrate over a point would mean just drop, drop it out. It's a zero form. Okay, O, o zero associated to polynomial P is P of sigma. Now, what is O two associated to P? It means that we need to integrate over CP one. To integrate, we need to extract one phi out of it. It is P prime of sigma times B. Sorry, um, we're integrating out the, the quasi maps, right? No, we, we will integrate. So here we are integrating this observable over CP1. Oh, okay. So we are we are in preparation to integrate over quasi map. Mm -hmm. O zero means that we integrate against point here. To integrate against point, just uh, mm -hmm. look at it as a function. Function happens when phi is absent. Mm -hmm. To integrate over CP one, we need to keep phi. Mm -hmm. So now we are prepared. We are well prepared to integrate. So what we are, what we would like to do, we would like to consider the following uh, things. The following thing: zero observables, p of sigma, p one. PL of sigma and some number of two observables integrated. General two observables, PK, PK. So that's what we are going to do. Maybe I'll put it like this. So it's, uh, it's uh, reasonable to integrate up to up to time of some finite degree. I put some here. So we are going to integrate it over this space. Pp n plus 1, b plus 1, minus 1. is of course given by putting denominator and denominator is of course sigma n plus one b plus one which which integration is given by the denominator sorry over this mm -hmm. And this is this depends on D. While I'd like to say, I'd like to put the instanton number, the instanton counting parameter Q to the power D and take a sum. And this, now this is what I would like to call P1 of sigma, etc. PL of sigma in the presence of the exponent of the integrated PK of two.
So you may ask why I am putting uh, these two absorbable to exponent. I am putting these two absorbable to exponent because they look like deformation of the action. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I am doing it. And this depends on Q, of course. So left-hand side depends on T's and Q's. And this is an answer in the gauge linear sigma module. So first of all, let us compute it for t equal to zero. Then it is clear that we hear that we have here geometrical progression. I think it's in English it's called the uh, how do you call geometric progression in English? Just like you did? Yes. I, because there are some uh, notions that differ in English and in Russian. And when you study it, when you are a child, you don't remember. Okay. So here, I decompose it like this. One. So here I have sigma to n plus 1 d, okay? So origin of this n plus 1 d plus 1 and that it was just these coefficients a that enter linear. Ah, uh, we can sum it. It is babam Sigma minus and plus Sigma and plus Baba you want is this formula clear? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, sum is taken. Then I multiply. And I get the famous formula. Sigma n plus 1 minus u. So this was for t equals zero. It was the formula that we started with. It was the formula for quantum cohomology of CPN. Mm -hmm. In order, so in order to understand this formula properly, we had to know something. We had to study something. We had to study equivalent cohomology. Okay. So that's how we have it. Now, still, we need to do something uh, with the exponent, right? Here we have TK. We need to take two observables. D times P prime of sigma. D is not differential, it's D, TK. You know, interestingly, this also is something to the power of D. So 
know we know how to treat it. Okay? So here I will have similarly. Okay. Let, 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 let us do it slowly. Because you see, it's it's so, so simple computation. And then I seem to compute something very complicated. But this is simple. So, so it's progression. So it's sigma to the n plus one once again, and here I have uh, one minus, so it goes like u. So it goes with q, right? And then I multiply, and finally I get. So this is Q. And this is the result. There should be no exponential rate because we summed over, yeah. Uh -huh. The result. So without without turning on these T's, uh, that was the same answer as in as in the A model and quantum cohomology. Yes, yes, yes. It was the same answer answer as a nonlinear model because yeah. for greater or equal than one, freckles were in co-dimension. Mm -hmm. For n equals to, to zero, here we have the dot trivial answer, and the name model we have a foolish answer because because of freckle because freckle always enter the game. Mm -hmm. So 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 it is so it is the answer. And then, uh, and then you may uh, have a look at it and try to guess what is the superpotential that corresponds to this model. Oh, by the way, no, that, that if PK prime, if PK, sorry, if, that if P equals to sigma itself, then uh, coefficient, then here we have one and uh, T1 shifts U. Expected result. 
Remember that sigma was for Vinish 2D. So we say that two forms, uh, that the integral uh, of, of sigma, so that it is D, okay. It is clear. So you might try to look at so look for super potential that comes out of it. But before, before you do this, you might see that T enters in kind of a simple way here. It's too simple to be true. But what do, you, what do I mean? So, okay. So there is this function. Note. So, it, so there are interested. So you, you may study this formula, okay. When I say note or use, uh, one can get this formula. So I, I hope I did it correctly. So that there was no mistake. Still, there is something that that bothers me in this formula, namely okay. Um, uh, and they so we uh, should you make a little break at some point or? So so we so after we after we got this formula, we should we should we should have a break. Because now we will analyze particular cases. Now it's uh, now when it comes uh, to the issue uh, four equals uh, three plus one. Mm -hmm. Oh, we all have a break, right? Yes, we have a break. Ah, okay. <laughs> I didn't understand. Okay. So you, I'm sorry, Pasha. I agree that we had a break and I started to think. Ah, okay. Okay. So we have a five minute break. Okay, good. good. By the way, was it? Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. So am, am I going with the right speed? Or I should go faster or slower? Oh, definitely not fast. Uh, well, uh, and okay, I, I'm sorry. Uh, you see, it's, I'm it's, sorry okay. that the time going uh, too slow. No, I don't think so. You need to hold me, as your father said. No, uh, and I, I don't feel very good, and uh, I, I'm not the best sort of target audience now. So, no, but I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to, uh, trying to okay. understand. Okay. Okay, thank you. Five minutes break.
Okay. Okay. So 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 let us so let us see uh, how paradoxical uh, things could be if we replace nearly evaluation map by evaluation map. Mm -hmm. I will not go very fast. So let us see. How can we write in this language the number of lines in C squared going through two points? I'm sorry. Hello? Number of lines mean non permit right. Non permit right map. While we are dealing with permit right maps. So if there is one line going through two points, it means that uh, there is a SL2C family of maps going through going through two points. One map is obtained from another by uh, SL2 transformation. So we need to fix this somehow. The easiest way to fix it is to impose the following condition. That we are looking at parameterized maps, PP1, 
into CP2, such that point, say, zero here, goes through line L0, point one goes through line L1, point two goes through line L2, so this would fix parameterization. And some unknown point Z goes to the point 1 and uh, Z1. And Z2 goes to the point 2. So this is the picture. So Z1 goes here, Z2 goes here. We don't know what, the, what are these Z1 and Z2, while uh, 0, 1, and 2 are exactly here. So these conditions fix parameterization and here we should get the number. Now let us write it down in terms of observables. This thing means that we have at zero a zero observable corresponding to the line. This is, of course, sigma. We also have at point one, and this is actually L naught, L one, and this is also sigma. And of course, O, zero, L3. L, so, sorry, L0, L2. This is also sigma, so, so these are linear equations. Now, here, we have a point. So, so, point. so you, why, why the observables don't, don't depend on the actual lines? In cohomology, you can deform any line to each other. It's, so these are lines on CP2. All lines mm -hmm. are. So when I say equal, I mean equivalent in cohomology. Okay. Now here we have the product of two lines. And also, we say that in general position, for general Z1, so we have O2 for the point C1, this is sigma plus pi squared. Okay? So O2 P1. Here again we have sigma plus pi squared. And from this we integrate. And here we have two sigma. And here once again we have two sigma. Because we integrate pi, pi component. So here we have two. Here we have two. The origin of this two is that point is intersection of two lines, and we need to take two observable out of it, not a zero observable. Point means square. Two comes from the sigma pi 
term that has multiplicity two. Okay. So, sorry, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Why are we taking zero observables and two observables? Why are two observables integrated over CP1? Because, okay, th that's what I want to explain as slowly as possible. It's because the game we are playing is the following. We consider a map that points, prescribed points, zero, one, and two, two lines, L0 and one and L2, Mm -hmm. That po that puts some unknown point, a point z one, to point p one, mm -hmm. and some point unknown point z two to point p two. Mm -hmm. So when we say that we study all lines, all parametrized lines, so by line, of course, I mean holomorphic map. From CP1 to CP2 of degree 1. Ah, it's because Z1 and Z2 and Z2 are not fixed, therefore you need yeah, they, are to observe. Fixed. they are not fixed from the problem. <laughs> yes. We know that uh, it, it just passes through this point. But but a priori we don't know their position. Mm -hmm. so that's why we integrate. However, we fix point zero, one, and two. To fix parameterization. Mm -hmm. Now let us again compute this magnificent number n plus one, d plus one, minus one. So at least we need to know n plus one, d plus one. D is definitely one. N is definitely two. So two plus one is three. One plus one is two. So here, so here we have six. So number of A's is six. So that's why we compute integral sigma to the power six. Sigma, sigma, sigma from here. Two sigma, two sigma from here and over the sigma. And result is four. Four. While we thought that it had to be one. Answer is four. Looks that it's a puzzle. Okay. And actually, we were puzzled at the beginning. Because we thought when we studied this that look, it's an answer. Then we started to see how it came out. So there is a contribution where there is no freckles once again. And there is a contribution when there are freckles. So, so it is freckles that are dangerous here. So freckles However, freckles happen in complex dimension two. Okay. So how can we get three stupid contributions from the freckles? So freckle have, so 
So there are in complex can dimension two, two freckles. So here is the world sheet, CP1. Two freckles. So how many freckles do we have? Uh, in dimension one, sorry, we have one freckle. Yes. The space is CP5. The dimension, uh, okay. So freckle, uh, so space is CP5, yes? So let, let, let us see. Dimension of space of max is, was uh, five, CP5. So uh, freckle configuration. It is like this. It's a freckle. And here we have a map to CP2. So let us compute the dimension of such configuration. The map to CP2 constant map. Constant map to CP2 has complex dimension two. Position of a freckle has complex dimension one. Altogether, we have uh, dimension three. That is in co-dimension two. I just uh, checked the formula. Now, how can it be that uh, freckle solved all problems that we have? So what freckle does? If freckle comes to a point where observable is, it solves all equations. Okay? I'll write this slogan. You know, it's kind of like advertisement company. Freckle solves all equations. At the point where freckle is. But we have a lot of equations. Look, we have equations at point Z1. We have equations at point Z2. And we have equations at point 0, 1, and 2. Huh? So we have equa equations everywhere. The only way for a freckle to solve all equations is to consider the case when Z1 equals Z2 equals position of freckle. Okay? Good. But then this, this point where, where all this happened has to be placed somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it could be placed either at zero or at one or, or at two. Three options. Zero, one, two. Three options. Let us consider option zero because the rest is the same. So we solve all equations at point zero, at point Z1, and at point Z2, where uh, freckle, where Z1, Z2, zero, and freckle all come together. Okay? So what we, what we are left with? We are left with the equations at point one and two. But point one and two intersect at some point P one two. 
only one point. So after Freckle solves all equations, the rest of the moduli, I mean constant map, has to solve this. Namely, the rest of the freckle is mapped to this intersection point. So this is how freckle solves what we asked him to solve. Freckle gives uh, auxiliary contribution where everything is mapped not on this line <laughs> but on the intersection point of the lines that were used to fix parameterization all, all the rest uh, is solved by freckle so when we discovered it with Nikita Nikrasov we called and of course there are three options Okay. And that's how we get this auxiliary auxiliary three. So what so what what would it mean? It would mean that uh, something wrong is going on. At least it looks not like a nonlinear sigma model. It is something different. So I think we were the first to discover it, compute it. I am proud of it, of what we discovered, because it's very funny, very unexpected. So I, I have to advertise myself because uh, we discovered it 20 years ago and since then uh, nobody knows why 4 equals 3 plus 1. <laughs> it is the simplest explanation why 4 equals 3 plus 1. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, actually it means that uh, you should extract freckle phenomena and extracting freckle phenomena means that uh, that from the generating function here you need to you need to extract this contribution you see the contribution was where points p1 and p2 coincide so it is it looks like a contact term and contact term means that these t's are not the flat are not flat variables. There should be diffeomorphism, and only after diffeomorphism that you will do here, you have a chance to get uh, proper uh, expression. So, so life is not that naive as you may think. And we had a program, scientific program, to study these freckle contributions because things are doable. But we failed in combinatorics. Somehow. Without that, you see, we could do uh, projective spaces, uh, almost everything. Construct the ground fitness theory, almost everything. But there is this record phenomena. And now, now, I am changing with the point of view. I consider a theory with freckles as a, a separate kind of theory and I need I think that they have to be studied on their own as a linear sigma model and uh, by the way it turns out that uh, Nikita Nikrasov is also moving 
to this way. Parallel to my way. Or maybe I, I am moving parallel to his way. So soon we will meet like two, like these two lines. Okay, okay I think it's enough for today. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's enough for today? Right, right, right. Because, ah, you see, it's hard to stop me. Как поющего Кобзона. Okay. Very good. Okay, so, so here, here you see that, uh, so what can one do here? One can continue this model uh, by considering everything equivalently with respect to two groups acting here. One is the group of uh, C star action on sources. Mm -hmm. And another group is, of course, C star action on target. And we already studied it here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it is the topic of the separate talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one can do it this way. Then one can try to see contributions. So here, so here you, so here you can study this integral equivalent. And then one can look at contributions coming from the fixed point. And fixed point would be when all instantons are localized either on the first pole of CP1 that is mapped, or to the second pole. Mm -hmm. And contribution of the first pole would be the nikrasov given tally function. While given tally was studying contribution of two poles. And now, you see, I can speculate. I have a right to speculate. So, uh, If you look on what I'm talking to you, to telling you, you may see that the fact that source manifold was CP1 could be easily generalized. So the general function would be when you have toric source, toric target, equivalently to both toric actions on toric source and toric action to toric target. Mm -hmm. So this, so this has to be something very, very universal. Moreover, when you say uh, toric, you may say and if we replace uh, C star by algebraic group G, this, this would be the best. Okay. Mm -hmm. But at least, but at least for Toric, there uh, I see the full world. So when your when the toric source is two dimensional, it, it has complex dimension two. It is a linear sigma model on uh, in four dimensional field, and we discussed that it is uh, that it corresponds to some four dimensional field. And uh, you see freckles, 
would be strings and not only freckles but also position things that previously were positions of zero and poles or pre-images of uh, compatification devices would be strings So here is a new life coming out together with a covariant computation. And uh, in order not to hurry up, we will discuss it next time. Good? Right. Good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. So right. questions. Actually, why was it sigma to the six in, in the denominator there? Because in your formula, it is sigma to the n plus one minus q. And why, was it, why did it become sigma because, to the six? Because, because we, consider, we consider case uh, linear and q. <coughs> mm -hmm. This is a total formula. Yes. The total formula came from geometric progression. Mm -hmm. Yes. B plus one. Uh, Okay. Ah. So when b equals to one, we have six. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we so idea is that we understand it term by term and the sum. Understood. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So Andre, thank you. I, I think I, sh I should I should decouple. Uh, so there is a. Pasha, uh, yes. We, we, we plan to meet, but you. Don't I know. I, I know. I know. I uh, yes. Yes, I'm I, I'm decoupling for now. Ah. We yeah. So right. I, I'm waiting for you. In... So we we are meeting at seven thirty your time. Yes. And really in fun. half an hour. If you feel, sorry, sorry? Uh, If you wish, we can shift it. So you could no, we can, no, we cannot. There, there, there are several other people involved with whom this time is agreed, so we cannot. Okay. We can... Yes, yes. seven thirty my time. Yes. Okay. So, Thank you. Buddy. Yeah, and there, there's a, a talk by Vladimir Fok in several minutes. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, 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 just in in case. Uh, in case you are interested, it's some. I, I, I have a schedule too, so I can't. Right, 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 right. He's talking about a moment map of general relativity. Ah, by the way, Pasha, if it's possible, could you send me the link? Maybe if I have five minutes, I'll attempt just to say hello. Sure, sure, I can send you the link. Mm -hmm. All yes, right. Yes. It says yes. No, no. I mean, you need you need to fly to I don't know actually where uh, the seminar is organized in Geneva, but but no, no, it but, doesn't matter. It's here. so please send me the link. Yes, if, uh -huh. if it's allowed. It. I think so. To the chat or to email, whatever. But just uh, let, I'll send it. Okay, Better let me see. Possible. Sure, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank okay. you. See? Uh, yeah. Donald, uh, 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 any questions? Um, yes, but this is just for me. It's probably a silly question. So um, we have that there are two lines meeting at these P1s and P2s, and that's why we get sigma plus phi squared, right? So. Yeah, yes, yes, because we, it's a point that is intersection of two lines. Well, which sorry, I, I think point, I'm standing point in C squared is an intersection of two lines. Ah, I see. That's why. Okay. Okay, that, that that's what I missed. That's that's why it's uh, sigma plus phi squared. Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Hmm? Okay. Okay. 
OK, so then, uh, see, see, see you next time. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the lecture. Thank see you next time. Mm -hmm.